The phrase bad boy for life has started to take on a whole new meaning for the now embattled hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The images of Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes being raided by federal agents sent the industry into a tailspin. And despite the jaw-dropping lawsuits filed against him by his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura and a former producer for him, Rodney Jones Jr., a.k.a. Lil Rod, it's not the first time Diddy Love, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Diddy, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Puffy, has had a brush with the law. The rapper and mega producer has been embroiled in legal controversy going back more than 30 years. In 1991, Combs helped promote a celebrity basketball game and concert at City College of New York. The gym reportedly had a capacity of a little more than 2,700 people. However, nearly 5,000 people showed up and security couldn't control the crowd. When organizers closed the door and stopped letting attendees inside, people broke through the gym doors, rushing into the lobby, causing a stampede. Nine people were crushed to death at the bottom of the staircase, and more than 20 others were injured. Then New York City Mayor David Dinkins' administration published a more than 60-page report, citing Combs for hiring inadequate and inexperienced security. Combs settled a slew of lawsuits from family members of attendees who died and finalized the last lawsuit in 2000. And for hip-hop and rap fans, it's hard to imagine, but at one point, Diddy, known then as Puffy and Suge Knight, were once friends. But that relationship soured, even turning violent. The animosity between Puffy and Shook started when Shook's friend and security guard Jake Robles was shot and killed outside an Atlanta nightclub after an argument with someone from Puffy's bad boy entourage. Entourage members with Puff's and Suge Knight's camp were celebrating Jermaine Dupri's birthday when an argument broke out between bad boy and death row records entourage. An Atlanta PD officer told the L.A. Times police escorted Puffy and his guests outside to leave the club and thought the coast was clear, allowing Knight and his entourage to leave. The officer, who was working security for the party, said all of a sudden Puffy's men came around the corner with a gun. The officer slash security guard told the Times by the time he got back to the front of the club, Shook security guard had been shot multiple times. Robles died weeks later. Combs denied his involvement in the shooting, but Shook Knight reportedly held him responsible for it. Three years later, in 1998, Combs and two other men attacked rapper Nas's manager, Steve Stout. According to Rolling Stone magazine, the attack happened after Stout sent MTV a version of Combs and Nas's Hate Me Now, which contained a scene showing Combs as Jesus Christ being crucified. Combs reportedly wanted the crucifixion scene deleted and was furious it played on air. Stout says Combs and two other men barged into his New York office and attacked him with a champagne bottle. He said he was left with a broken arm and jaw. Combs denied any bones were broken. He would later tell MTV, quote, I basically went to his office and what happened in his office I can't really speak about, but I can say this. The way I handled myself in his office was completely wrong, and I've apologized to Steve about that, and I felt like I just disappointed myself. Combs was charged with second-degree assault and criminal mischief and sentenced to just one day of anger management class. A year after the Stout attack in December of 99, Combs and his then-protege Jamal Barrow, better known as Shine, and Diddy's then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, were partying at a club in New York when Diddy knocked a drink out of the hands of a man named Matthew Allen, also known as Scar. Scar got into an argument with Diddy and at some point someone threw money at Diddy's face and Scar threatened to kill Shine. Prosecutors say all three men drew guns and Shine shot three times into a crowded club. Three people were shot. Diddy and Jennifer Lopez left the scene but were later pulled over after running a red light. Police found a gun in the car which led to the then couple getting arrested. Jennifer Lopez was detained for 14 hours and was ultimately released from custody. Diddy and J-Lo would later end their relationship. Diddy got indicted on charges stemming from the incident, including charges of criminal possession of an unregistered gun and attempted bribery for allegedly trying to get his bodyguard, Anthony Jones, to claim the weapon was his. Diddy's protege, Shine, who was also arrested with Diddy and Lopez, was convicted of two counts of assault, reckless endangerment, and gun possession. Diddy was acquitted while Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison. So is it possible Shine took the fall to protect Diddy? Attorney Afi Patterson says the power dynamics between Diddy and those around him may have been an influence. Well, I think you, you just said it, their leader, their boss, uh, a p person who is in a position of power, you know, um, what, what type of bargaining power uh, did Sean ha Shine have, who I absolutely loved, loved his album, um, 
memorized every single song. Um, I was really sad what happened uh, to him. But you know, what kind of what, what kind of power do they have? You know, like I mentioned earlier, it had long been rumored that um, Diddy does not financially take care of his artist. So you know, what what type of um, um, place of power did they have? By example, if we look at JLo, she was pretty early on in her musical career. This was what, 99, 2000. You know, what power did she have, you know, um, at that point? So, and I think actually um, that was an opportunity for her to get out of the situation because, um, from what I recall, after that whole nightclub situation, uh, the relationship was severed professionally and personally. And I think that um, more than anything, this was just an opportunity for her to get out of something that maybe she couldn't have gotten out of so easily before. Diddy's legal trouble and controversies didn't end there. In 2013, Diddy was allegedly involved in an altercation with rapper J. Cole during the 2013 MTV Music Video Awards after party. Multiple sources told Complex Magazine Diddy was visibly intoxicated when he approached rapper Kendrick Lamar about his rap verse on Big Sean's Control, where Lamar said he was the king of New York. Combs reportedly tried to pour a drink on Lamar before J. Cole stepped in and they got into a fight. Both J. Cole and Diddy denied a fight even took place. But J. Cole later rapped on his 2021 song, Let Go My Hand. My scrap was with Puff Daddy, who would have thought? The next year, in 2014, Diddy and Drake allegedly got into a physical dispute when Combs allegedly punched Drake over the rights to the beat that would later become Drake's 0 to 100. According to the Miami New Times, the two got into an argument that turned into blows during a DJ Khaled event in which Diddy allegedly told Drake, you will not disrespect me. But Combs would later deny punching Drake, telling The Breakfast Club, I didn't do nothing to Drake. Drake is my friend. Six months after that incident, Combs reportedly got into an altercation with a UCLA assistant football coach. Diddy was present for his son Justin Combs' football practice when the coach told Justin, I don't care if your dad's here. This is UCLA. I'm going to treat you just like I treat everyone else. Well, Diddy seemingly didn't like the coach speaking to his son that way. Diddy and Justin reportedly went to the coach's office after practice. An argument broke out between Diddy and the coach. Diddy was arrested for allegedly swinging a kettlebell at the assistant coach and charged with assault with a deadly weapon. But Diddy's reps claimed he was acting in self-defense. Ultimately, prosecutors reduced Diddy's charges to a misdemeanor. In 2017, a former chef of Diddy's alleged she was regularly made to prepare and serve food to Diddy and his guests while they were engaged in sexual acts. At the time, a spokesperson for Diddy told Variety it was a frivolous lawsuit by a disgruntled ex-employee who was fired for cause. However, in 2019, the lawsuit was settled for an undisclosed amount. In 2019, Diddy's ex-girlfriend Gina Hun told controversial blogger Tasha K Diddy physically abused her throughout their five-year relationship. She claimed Diddy stomped her on the stomach to the point she couldn't breathe and also punched her in the back of the head. In the podcast, Hun told Tasha K Diddy was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive. She said Diddy would often compare her and his then-girlfriend at the time singer Cassie to one another, saying Cassie was the good one and Hun was the bad one. Hun said at the time everyone in Diddy's circle knew and allowed the abuse to occur. Those sentiments were echoed in singer Cassie Ventura's 2023 federal lawsuit against Diddy. The singer who had dated Diddy on and off for a decade accused the mogul of rape and abuse. In one incident, Diddy allegedly pushed her into a car, then proceeded to kick her in the face repeatedly. And another claim an intoxicated Diddy allegedly gave Cassie a black eye after she tried to leave a hotel room. The hotel security camera footage captured the incident, but Diddy allegedly bought it off for $50,000. Cassie alleged Diddy had a pattern of abuse, including controlling every aspect of her life, from what she wore to where she lived. The suit alleged Diddy forced Cassie to have sex with male sex workers. And Diddy allegedly supplied Cassie with different drugs, including ecstasy and ketamine. The suit stated the drug abuse was so bad, Cassie suffered from memory loss. And when she went to the doctor's office, her MRI results were not sent to her, but obtained by Diddy instead. The suit was ultimately settled a day after it was filed for an undisclosed amount. I wasn't surprised that he settled. I think he looked at um, the reaction from the public and it was swift and it was not pleasant for him. And I think he saw um, that it wasn't going to go away. So he settled. But again, I don't understand um, what advice he was getting. I'm sure it was some learning advice. But, you know, had it been me, I think I would have been like, sir, I don't think this looks good. Settle. 
But did Cassie's lawsuit peel back the curtain to reveal the writing was always on the wall for Diddy? Attorney Afi Patterson believes so. I don't think the allegations were as loud as they were, I believe, that day in November. I remember I was boarding a flight to London and I was reading a, a Cassie Ventura's petition and I was like, oh, this is very loud. This is very explicit. I don't think the allegations had ever been that loud before. So I think people would always give him the benefit of the doubt because of his legacy in the community, because of what he's done. Um, you know, he had, of course, music, and then we know clothing, and then we know alcohol, and he had just a foothold in so many areas. So without some solid evidence, I, I think people always gave him the benefit of the doubt. And Cassie's suit wasn't the end of it. Following the settlement, Diddy was hit with additional lawsuits from women claiming he sexually assaulted them. One Jane Doe claimed that Combs and singer Aaron Hall raped her and an unidentified friend in the early 90s. But a spokesperson for Diddy called the claims fabricated and a money grab. Then just last month, the former employee of Diddy's, Rodney Jones Jr., also known as Lil Rod, accused the rapper of sexual assault while working on Diddy's 2023 album. According to the suit, Jones claims he was subjected to possible drugging and rape, ritual humiliation, and being cheated out of more than $50,000 for work on Diddy's album. The suit also names actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones believed Diddy was grooming him in an attempt to pass him off to Gooding, leaving the two alone in a studio on Diddy's yacht where Gooding is alleged to have groped and fondled Jones when the two were left alone. And that wasn't the only high-profile name attached to the suit. Jones claims Diddy used his access to celebrities, famous athletes, political figures, musicians, and international dignitaries like Prince Harry to draw guests to Diddy's parties, which were seemingly breeding grounds for alleged sex trafficking. Prince Harry is not a defendant in the suit, nor has he been accused of criminal acts. However, City Girls rapper Carisha Brownlee, a.k.a. Young Miami, has been named in Lil Rod's $30 million lawsuit. She's accused of transporting pink cocaine on a private jet from Miami to Virginia. And that's not the only claim against rapper Young Miami. Jones's lawsuit claims the City Girls rapper and 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend Daphne Joy were sex workers for Diddy and paid monthly stipends. At this time, Daphne Joy and Young Miami have not responded to the suit. However, Daphne Joy's ex, Curtis Jackson, a.k.a. 50 Cent, responded with this post to Instagram with the caption, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker. LOL. Yo, this stuff is a movie. So with nearly 30 years of different legal battles, why did it seemingly take so long for a reckoning when it came to Diddy? Patterson credits Cassie for opening the floodgates. I think it's the different type of uh, people who are involved in um, the music industry. You know, my friends and I are always talking like, when is it going to happen for music? When is, um, you know, music going to be me too? You know, I consider... Um, uh, the television, film and television, the wild, wild west. But, you know, if that's the wild, wild west, the, the music industry is just, I, I don't know what's what's crazier than that, but definitely music is. And I think it just always goes back to um, bargaining power and, you know, um, the type of people who are in the music industry, you know, what are, what are their resources? Um, so I think, uh, you know, and, and let's talk about like their unions, you know, um, you know, who, who do they have to go to collectively to organize and to support them, especially if, um, you know, they're going to be the poster child for bringing somebody down, you know, what are their collective resources who's supporting them? So I think that's why it's just, it's taken so long, um, in music. And again, as far as puppy goes, you know, um, these alleged victims, thank God for Cassie, because she actually put her name behind it. And I think she, empowered and enabled a lot of people to come out and it's starting with um it's definitely starting with puffy but could we see an arrest for the hip-hop mogul and mega hit maker patterson says absolutely i've been looking at all of the um just the youtube videos and the interviews that his former employees and i mean um, bodyguards and people closely associated with him have been giving and one thing that's um i guess been repeated multiple times is the fact that um, Diddy has trophies. He keeps videos of everything. So I think um, after the raids, a lot is going to come out. Um, it was said that there are um, secret uh, cameras in every room. And if there is one person who is underage, um, he's, he's going to be charged. But I suspect they're going to find a lot on those videos. Um, and and uh, the arrest may not be, you know, next week, and it may not be next month, but it's definitely forthcoming. 
do you see a um, a future of his employees also being arrested too? Yes. After Monday's raid, Diddy's lawyer issued a statement saying in part, there was a gross overuse of military level force. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. There is no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of the allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. And after this week's Ray Little Rod's attorney told Rolling Stone magazine, it's about damn time. Sometimes justice delayed is not justice denied so long as justice ultimately arrives. Meanwhile, Cassie's lawyer released a statement saying, quote, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.